The story you are about to see is a fib, but it's short. The names are made up, but the problems are real. It was Friday, 6.43 a.m., and New York City's heat wave was affecting everyone except the polar bears at the Bronx Zoo. They had plenty of ice, and a new cooler at fashionable Eastside Bistros was named after them, Bears on the Rocks. I was working the day watch out of MathNet. The boss is Joe Greco. My partner is George Frankly. My name is Tuesday. I'm a mathematician. It had been a long week, and I was tired of doing recaps, but hopefully this would be the last one. We had been working on a case involving the Megalopolitan Insurance Company, a company that was losing a lot of money on cars it was insuring. And surprisingly, the cars were not in accidents. They were stolen. And one man sold all the policies on those cars. His name was Casper Floosh. Mr. Floosh, can you explain how it happened that none, zero of the cars you've insured recently have been recovered by the police? No. Can you explain how most of your recent policy sales have been on very expensive cars? No. Can you explain why your office is showing such a huge increase in claims? No. I'm not doing very well, am I? No. no. We'll be in touch, Mr. Floosh. As the news seemed to be tightening around Mr. Floosh's actuarials, bright-eyed Stanley noticed something about the many checks Megalopolitan had paid out to the insurees. Those cars were all expensive. The signatures looked similar. I'd estimate they paid about... George guessed the company had paid out nearly one million dollars in claims. Look at the T's. What if... Wait a minute. Well, they're all crossed, sort of... Downhill. See, every time there's a T in a name, it's crossed the same way. We decided it was time to play What Do We Know? What's What Do We Know? It's a way to organize the facts that we have. It's a way to try to solve a problem. Now watch, I'll go first. We know that the auto dealers don't exist. Right. And we know the policyholders' addresses don't exist. What if the policyholders don't exist? But they do. They all open banking accounts. And close them with checks to some charity. What charity? The Save the Musca Domestica Fund. Then maybe the charity doesn't exist. Why do you say that, Stanley? I've never heard of a charity to save the common housefly. We had asked Captain Greco to analyze the handwriting. He found that the checks were endorsed by the same person, Johnny Dollar. The same hand. I'd stake my rep on it. I reached Johnny on his car phone as he was speeding along the Palisades Parkway. I put him on the squawk box. We'd like you to meet us at Megalopolitan. There's been a breakthrough in the case. Really? What kind of breakthrough? We've recovered one of the stolen cars. Now that's impossible. I mean, I mean, that's impossibly wonderful news. Which stolen car? The white Rolls Royce. We want you to check it out. How long will it take to get to the office? In this rain and fog, if I pull the 180 and put the pedal to the metal, I'd say, uh, at least an hour. Okay, we'll see you in an hour. <laughs> Towards this car? There's no sign of it. Have they found his body yet? It's all my fault. No, it's not, Pat. There was zero visibility. The roads were slick. If I hadn't had that stupid plan. Don't blame yourself. It was a good plan. It just didn't work out, that's all. I killed Johnny Dollar. I hate automobile accidents. They're almost always avoidable. That's right, Captain. Do you think there's any chance he could have survived? See the car? See the river? That's one mean river. Especially during a storm. No way, George. Johnny Dollar may have been a crook, but nobody deserves that. Oh, 
Morning, troops. Oh, hi, Mr. Frankly. Is Miss Tuesday okay? She's fine, Stanley. Pat coming in this morning, George? A little later, Benny. George, I want this case officially wrapped up. What's this? A warrant to search the deceased apartment. Get out there and round up whatever evidence there is. Right. Come on, Benny. Me too, huh? I need a big 3-0 for my story. You sure you couldn't spend the time better on the bike? The Wimpus show is this afternoon, isn't it? Yeah, but, well, I really don't think I have much of a chance. I'll go with you, okay? We searched Johnny Dollar's apartment house, a tidy little set of rooms in Midtown. To say we were surprised at what we found in Johnny Dollar's pad would be an understatement. We expected some bank books, canceled checks, insurance policies, license plates, something. Instead, we found Zilch. I'm sure Pat would have found something because she's used to doing voiceovers and I'm not. <laughs> if it hadn't have been for Sheba's residue, we wouldn't have known it was Johnny's apartment. Sheba, too, we guessed, was in that great litter box in the sky. We drove to Megalopolitan to give Catherine T. Wilcall our final report. And we think that's probably how it worked. So Johnny Dollar made up phony bills of sale from automobile dealers that never existed. That's right, Mrs. Wilcall. Then he bought insurance from your company. By phone. And I took the information. He disguised his voice and used different names, and he sent me the papers and the checks for the premiums. Right, then he took the information to the DMV, the, the Department, Department of, of Motor, Motor Vehicles. Vehicles. They issued the license plates and the registration. Then Johnny reported the car stolen to the police. They issued a report. And Mr. Dollar sent the reports to you. And, and we, we paid, paid the, the money. money. For cars that never existed. Ingenious. He cost this company a bundle. But at least it's probably over. Yes. We have flagged other policies sold recently, just to make sure there are actual cars involved. But even so, it's not quite over. What do you mean? Just a couple of weeks ago. About 13 days to be exact. You keep a very sharp point on your pencil, don't you, Floosh? Nevertheless, Dollar recently bought a life insurance policy from us in the amount of $500,000. 500 Gs, that's half a million dollars. It turns out that it is exactly one million dollars. He had a double indemnity clause. What's double indem... indem... what Mr. Floosh said? Double indemnity means our company must pay double the amount of insurance if death was caused by an accident. It was an accident. No doubt. I should know. I'm the one who caused it. Pat, what are you doing here? I just feel I belong here, George, okay? Sure, of course. Who is the beneficiary of the policy, Mrs. Wilcall? The what? That means who gets the bread. Johnny Dollar's mother, Stella. Stella Dollar? Yes, and I'm about to deliver the check myself. If it's all the same to you, Mrs. Wilcall, I'll take that check to Johnny Dollar's mother. Not an easy job, but it's the least I could do. Pat, you don't have to do that. It's above and beyond the call of duty. Please. I'd like to do it. Very well. Her address is on the envelope. I'll go with you. I'll drive. All right. You'll, You'll go, go to the, the Women's, women's Bike show. show. I'll drop you off. <laughs> 